Joshua 24. And we're going to go down to verse 14. The Lord had been speaking to people through Joshua. And uh, he reminded the people of where God had brought them from. Every now and then we need to be reminded where God brought us from where we would have been had it not been for the Lord. We don't know the Spirit ministered to that little girl, Vanessa, about some crooked places ahead of her, but He's going to make those crooked places straight. The Lord has a plan for every one of you. Every now and then, late at night when I'm praying and I Call your name before the Lord. Everyone here, I say, Lord, every one of them is dealing with something. All of you have got situations in your life that you're trying to deal with. Some are not easy. But by the grace of God, you're going to make it. And I call you by name and, and talk to the Lord about your situation. I really don't know of anyone here that has not went through a breaking, a crushing at some time in your life. And Satan thought that he had destroyed you, but mercy came by. And grace and the promise of God came by. That's the good part. But I was praying, and I wrote this down, January the 19th, the 23rd, year 23, 5.43 in the morning, I was at my computer working, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord came in the room, and He spoke to me, and that's the reason I'm going to preach what I'm going to preach in just a few minutes. But Sister Audrey's Sunday school lesson went right along with what I'm going to preach today. So we need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now it's one thing to hear my words, but I pray that God will circumcise our ears to really hear what the Spirit is saying. Joshua heard about this fellow that went to prison and his name was Joshua someone said are you the Joshua that caused the sun to stand still he said no I'm the Joshua that, that made the moon shine so he was in prison because he had made the moon shine but I think of that a lot when I think of Joshua now let's go back to verse well let me put my glasses on The Lord speaking. Well, let's go back to verse 12, really. He said, I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out, the enemy, from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with my sword, nor with my bow, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, Cities which you built not, and you dwell in them. Of the vineyards of the olives, yards, which you planted not, do you eat. Verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I ask you to take these words and do with them something I cannot do. Lord, bring out things in this that my mind has not even thought of, that only you can do, but preach to these people. Lord, minister to these people through the Word and the Spirit in Jesus' name. Remembering where we came from and how the Lord many times drove your enemy 
away. But it said, Therefore now fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. Did you know that it's time for the church world to get down in sincerity and in truth with God? With God. And uh, he said, Put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and serve ye the Lord. Now the thing the Lord spoke to me is this. He said there are alternate gods. Alternate gods. The word alternate means in other words changing one God to another. But there's a scripture that said I'll have there'll be no other gods before me. I am the Lord your God. But alternate gods. And my mind went to this scripture. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. America, and the Lord impressed me with this. He said, there is a national God, but there is your personal God. The last few years, America has tried to choose another God, a national. In other words, a whole nation must bow down to that God. We read about the image in Daniel's day that they made, erected, and then the powers that be literally forced people to bow to that God and image or else be burned in the fiery furnace. I was listening to the news yesterday on America's Voice. I'm glad I found that station. Thank you, Brother Dean. But they were talking about plans that are now in operation. There's an unseen, undercurrent plan going on that the average America does not know one thing about. But it has to do with forcing you to serve a national God. The Lord talked talk to me about the national God. I didn't hear that on the media. But they went on to say that we are approaching the time that you can neither buy nor sell unless you, in other words, bow down to the national God that they choose for America. And I prayed. I said, God, what is that national God? Well, America, it will be the economy. They will rule by the economy. And they're talking about how they can already, and they will do it more and more as time goes on, allow you to use so much of your money that you may have in the bank. They will determine just how much of your own money that you will be able to spend. They will determine what you can spend it for. In other words, that their God they will try to force on America is the economy. I don't know how they will go about it. But it gets back to this COVID devil that they began to be in earnest to bring people under subjection to the will of the government. They will use medications. They will decide what medication that you're going to use, how much you can use, when and how. They get down to surveying everything 
that you purchase. They know what you like. They know your priority in the things that you buy. Even the home where you live, your area code, your zip code. The national God, America's God, the ultimate reason is to bring you into total subjection to what they want you to do. And if you don't, then they can freeze everything you've got and you can't touch any of it. You see, even the secular media is beginning to talk about these things that are going on. But if if the average person that does not know Bible prophecy like we do, it may not mean as much to them as it does us. But when I hear these things, my ears go up. And I thank God that's what the Bible said. That's what the Word said. And it brings attention to me. But the average American does not understand what authority a national God, G-O-D, will have eventually. To have the absolute power over you, over your children, over your everything. That's the national America's God that's being formed by a select people that America has voted into office. We're in a time that we need to hear, honey, what the Spirit is saying. My God, help us to hear what the Spirit is saying. We do not need to take the visitation that we had this morning. Honey, don't take that lightly. Cherish it. Cherish it. Cherish it. Embrace it. Hold on to it. Sister Linda, when the Lord spoke to me, he said, tell Linda to come from behind the pulpit and begin to walk among the people to sing those songs because I want to release a virtue that will reach out and minister to people. You see, everything we do, there's got to be a virtue in it. That means power of the living God that's released as we go into that high praise and the high worship. Everyone here, when that special time comes in our service, it doesn't happen every service, does it? But when it does, we need to cherish it and give way to it and say, Father, what's on your heart? I prayed off and on all night last night. I said, God, what is in your heart for our people in the morning? Lord, what is in your heart that you want to do for our people in the morning? And then this morning, over there praying, I said, God, Open the portal. Father, open the portal. And let the glory of your presence begin to flow over this congregation. But when it does, we've got to cooperate with it. We've got to flow with it. My God, we've got to desert it. You see, a lot of times the Lord would like to move. But we're not focused in of what he wants to do. It's not what I want. But Father, what do you want in this particular service? Lord, what can you take a handful of people and do with it? Lord, just let us know what this thing is all about. And I've got to believe one interpretation of the eagle that Sister Linda said. That could be America. Because the Lord knew I was going to preach a little bit on America's God. How do we need to give an ear to hear? Lord, let our ears be healed. That we can literally heal what the Spirit is saying. That invisible move of God. That invisible voice of God. 
that small voice that Elijah, the great man of God. He felt he had been defeated by Jezebel. He was running for his life from Jezebel. He said, she's out to kill me. Church, this is no time to run from Jezebel, America's Jezebel. That will try to tell you how to worship, what name to worship. We're not going to run from that Jezebel, are we? Say the prophet, Elijah was a prophet. What we call a main prophet. He heard from God. But he was a prophet of fire. He had power. He had authority. He had dominion. Elijah had dominion in the heavenlies. My God. But that thing Jezebel that tried to control him. You see there is a spirit that would like to control your praise. That would like to control your worship. That would like to control everything we do. But God said this. Greater Maratestaya is he that's in you than he that is in this old world. America's God is not going to determine to you who to obey, what to obey, but know who your God is. Jehovah, the great almighty God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My God, the, the, the one that spoke one day, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. That God. Try the God that we serve. Elijah was running from God. He came to that cave, and he went in. And he heard a wind, but it wasn't God. He saw a fire, but it wasn't God. But then that still small voice spoke and says, What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Sometimes it would do us good if we could hear that still small voice and whisper in our ear, What are you doing here? If he asked me, what are you doing here? That's where I'm at now. Lord, I came to worship. Lord, I came to exalt the mighty name of the living God. Lord, I came as your servant, Motasa. I came as your servant, Lord, to echo what you spoke to me. When you said America, in other words, has many gods. America. No, he said there's, there's, there's many gods out there. But what God is, are you going to choose? Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But if God be God, but if Baal be Baal, but make up your mind who you're going to serve in this end time. The Lord said there's, in other words, many gods out there. And you'd be surprised at the God that a lot of churches are going to choose before this thing is over. What does my God require of me? What does my God require of me? That I walk softly and faithful before him. That I hear, and when I do, I obey. My God requires of me that I submit myself to his will and his way. My God requires of me that I exalt his name, honor his name. A few of the things that my God requires of me. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Do, does the church really fear God like we need to? Or has the fear of the Lord almost gone from the family of God? Do we no longer fear his wrath? You can make God mad. You can make God angry. David said, don't let me fall in the hand of an angry God. 
I never, ever, ever want to fall in the hand of an anger. I don't want to make God mad, do you? Sometimes our careless way of doing can absolutely make the Lord mad. I don't want to fall in the hand of an uh, angry God. But these people had heard. They had been told how God drove out the Amorites and all the ites from them, gave them bread to eat, gave them a power, and gave them, I would say, the necessities of life. But every now and then they would forget. Israel was always forgetting God. Every time they turned around, they had to be rebuked. I made this statement the other day on radio, I believe, and I, I said, the closer you try to draw to God, get ready to be corrected. The closer you try to draw to the Lord, get ready for Him to rebuke you every time you turn around. Why? Because He's a just God. He's a God of truth. He's a God of righteousness. And there's so much in us, in this flesh, that's not lined up with His righteousness. His truth. So sometimes if you're trying to be in this altar, Lord, I'm going to draw close to you, honey. He's going to rebuke you before you leave the altar about something. He did Israel. Therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity. In other words, get real with God and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. But I want to go down to verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served. Mm. There's a thing called tradition. And if you're not careful, you'll be doing things because mom and daddy did. Well, mom and daddy didn't believe it like that. Honey, I don't care what mom and daddy didn't believe. It's you and God. Your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I like that. As for me and my house, you are responsible for your house. We will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Now remember, the Lord said there are alternate gods. And that, that word alternate, I, I got it in the Hebrew translation, if I can find it here without my glasses. The Hebrew translation of alternate means to replace or to change, exchange, switch, swap, alternate. Getting back to the national God that is controlled by people that will be ruled from spirits from the, the bottomless pit. They have a plan. But then the Lord said, there's your personal my personal God. You've got to make him personal to you. As for me and my house, we will serve God. Child of God, you're coming to a place you're going to have to make that decision. Do not let some lukewarm person choose your God. Do not let someone that's never in church themselves choose your God. Someone that could care less about the things of God. Don't let them dictate to you what you can do and what you can't do. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. To serve. That means to be in obedience to. It did not dawn on me until maybe last night. I've shared this with you before. Years back in the 1980s, I was in Jamaica. Ministry. The night I was ministering, 
I preached on this scripture. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. If God be God, serve him. But if Baal, serve him. Honey, give it all you got. If you're going to serve God, give him everything that's in you. Everything. But if not, Raymond used to say, if I'm going to serve the devil, I'd make him a good servant. But if you're going to serve God, make up your mind, I'm going to make him a good servant. I'm going to give my all to be his servant. But I was preaching that night. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. If God be God, then serve him. But if Baal, serve him. And I've told you about the young lady that was in the back of the little brush harbor thing. She came up for prayer. She came so far, and, and it looked like she came to an invisible barrier. She could not come any further. So I went to her, and I began to pray. But all that time I could hear voices outside of the perimeter. Those voices were saying, God, God, God. I had no idea what it was. I just felt a heaviness. But that young lady, she was shaking and quaking. And I thought she was shouting, to tell you the truth. You know, we in our area, if anybody shakes and quakes a little bit, you think, oh, they got it. If they're speaking some kind of language, you say, oh, they've got the Holy Ghost. No, no. We got back to the pastor's house that night, Pastor Haynes. He looked at me. He said, Pastor, I'm going to tell you what you was listening, what you was hearing. Those voices out there, they were worshipers of fallen Lucifer fallen Lucifer. He said, that girl you prayed for, she was a worshiper. She is a worshiper of fallen Lucifer. It did not dawn on me till I think last night. I was walking this message out. They had a choice. Choose the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob or, or the God that you're serving. The God they were serving. They had what they called Rastafarians. Hideous looking people. But they were worshipers. But not of God. They would put warm cow dung in their hair. And then spike their hair up. And let it dry. Because they were worshiping. Another God. 